The Sunday School lesson for June 30th, 2024 is Hope in God Transforms Us. Acts chapter 26, verses 1 through 11. Welcome, viewers and subscribers, to my channel, The Backstory and More. I am Audrey. If you are new here, please notice the agenda. Also, if you are interested in knowing what happens before each Sunday school class, you are at the right place because I will share the backstory. Read the lesson text, offer a brief lesson summary. Viewers, please help this channel grow one viewer and one subscriber at a time. So please subscribe if you find this video is of any value to you. Thank you in advance for all that you do to help this channel grow one viewer and one subscriber at a time. The Backstory the book of Acts relates one of the most significant mindset changes made by an individual throughout history. That change involved a man named Saul, who was a deadly enemy of Christianity at first. Acts chapter 7, verses 6b through chapter 8, verse 3. But after an encounter with the risen Lord, Saul became Christianity's chief proponent. The specifics of how the change came about are recorded in Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 19, chapter 22, verses 3 through 21, and chapter 26, verses 12 through 18. Today's lesson is the preface to the third of these accounts. Saul was converted to Christianity in about A.D. 34. He subsequently traveled around the Mediterranean world on three missionary journeys. Perhaps desiring to leave his old identity in the past, Saul became known as Paul early in these journeys, chapter 13, verse 9. Shortly after the third journey ended in Caesarea Maritima, Paul traveled down to Jerusalem. There he was cited by enemies who incited a riot to silence him. Chapter 21, verses 17 through 29. Paul's subsequent arrest undoubtedly saved his life. Chapter 21, verses 30 through 36. The year was probably A.D. 58. After another riot or near riot, Paul used his Roman citizenship to avoid being flogged, Acts chapter 22, verses 22 through 29. An inquest and a murder plot ensued, chapter 22, verses 30 through chapter 23, verse 22. So Paul was transferred under heavy guard to Caesarea or Caesarea Maritima, about 75 mile road distance from Jerusalem, for trial under Governor Felix, chapter 23, verses 23 through chapter 24, verse 26. That trial was inconclusive, and Paul was held in prison for two years until Governor Festus replaced Felix, chapter 24, verse 27. That change in leadership resulted in another trial. <clears throat> Excuse me. Acts chapter 25, verses 1 through 9. <clears throat> Excuse me. Paul's appeal to Caesar, chapter 25, verses 10 through 12. High level consultation, chapter 25, verses 13 through 22. And appearance before King Agrippa II. Chapter 25, verses 23 through 27. That's the immediate backdrop to today's lesson. The year was about A.D. 60. The backstory ends here, and the lesson begins with the next frame. Verse 1. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. So Paul motioned with his hand and began his defense. Verses 2 through 3. 
King Agrippa, I consider myself fortunate to stand before you today as I make my defense against all the accusations of the Jews, and especially so because you are well acquainted with all the Jewish customs and controversies. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. Verses 4 through 5. The Jewish people all know the way I have lived ever since I was a child, from the beginning of my life in my own country and also in Jerusalem. They have known me for a long time and can testify, if they are willing, that I conformed to the strictest sect of our religion, living as a Pharisee. Verses 6 through 7. And now it is because of my hope in what God has promised our ancestors that I am on trial today. This is the promise our 12 tribes are hoping to see fulfilled as they earnestly serve God day and night. King Agrippa, it is because of all this hope that these Jews are accusing me. Verses 8 through 9. Why should any of you consider it incredible that God raised the dead? I too was convinced that I ought to do all that was possible to oppose the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Verse 10. And that is just what I did in Jerusalem. On the authority of the chief priests, I put many of the Lord's people in prison. And when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. Verse 11. Many a time I went from one synagogue to another to have them punished, and I tried to force them to blaspheme. I was so obsessed with persecuting them that I even hunted them down in foreign cities. A brief summary. Paul began his speech before this tribunal by recounting his early life as a faithful Jew, a strict Pharisee. Paul believed in keeping the law to the letter. Unlike the Sadducees, he held to the hope of a future resurrection of the dead. This issue was key. Agrippa knew that the idea of a last day's resurrection was a wedge itch issue between the two powerful Jewish sects. Paul used that understanding to clarify one of the reasons he was in prison. From the beginning of the church, the Sadducees used their political dominance in holding the office of high priest and key seats in the Sanhedrin to persecute believers. Paul used this theological issue that Festus did not understand to frame his argument with Agrippa. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Join me soon for the next backstory and more. Stay safe and may God bless.